I think sometimes we say we're just built for it. Yeah, yeah. And you kind of yeah. go through the storm in and out on one of those. Do you remember the SWOT analysis? I remember that. I I'm hated big, that. I'm a big fan of the SWOT analysis. Yeah. How do I, as an artist, get to shoot my shots to a brand, seeing that my numbers are not as high, but my engagements are up? A good engagement rate should be predominantly about 20% of your following. When you go into that room, you don't just represent yourself. You're engaging with another mm -hmm. entity mm -hmm. and you need to understand where they sit in the conversation. You don't need to lie to yourself and believe that you're the only person gaming that brand to work with them. You know, <laughs> a lot of people do, do that. that. It's not a real thing. That is so true. It's yeah, not a, it's real, not a thing. real thing. What is an ROI for them, not for, for you? you? Yo, welcome to another episode of Dial and Discover. That's hashtag DND. I'm sitting with my brother, Siam Fumu. How you doing, my brother? Yes, sir. I'm blessed. How are you? Good, good. Another episode, another week. Yes, sir. Another yeah. day, another dollar. Another day, another dollar. Shout out, shout out. And I'm yours truly, Calvin Mercy. When I thank you very much for continuing to support us. Please do like, comment, share this to your friends and family. Share this to whoever has been wondering how to get this type of information. Do follow us on social media as well. Uh, we enjoy engaging with you and we enjoy taking your questions and comments. Share your experiences with us or share your journey with us so that we can maybe engage with you and maybe help you out in what you doing uh my brother how's your week going going good going good going good yeah. trying um, to get the formalities out the way yeah yeah you know it's, it's <laughs> been a great week we're blessed yeah um yeah it's been a good week your side um the week has been good yeah. um today specifically is a bit challenging right you know? right Lots uh, of moving engaging hands. a lot of moving pieces right you know but it's one of those you know it's um uh, I think sometimes we say we're just built for it. Yeah, yeah, And you kind of yeah. go through the storm in and out on one of those. Yeah. Um, but the feedback from last week has been really good. I just wanted to mm. just speak on that. Just got a couple of comments, actually, you know, yeah. um, on some... I think the code of conduct chat was very interesting mm. for some. I think, you know, you hear that in school. Somebody specifically said in a comment, they said that you hear the code of conduct thing in school. Yeah. And I think in, in high school, it doesn't really land what the code of conduct is. But when you kind of get older and you speak about it in context, it's like, oh, okay. But actual fact, conduct is something you want to carry, right? Whether in your personal life, or whether in pro in a professional space, right. and more so now we're speaking about in a, we're speaking about in a professional space, right? 100%. Having a code of conduct. So a lot of people just hit me up on some, yo, that was actually I never thought of that. Type yeah, of thing. yeah. And I think even when we were talking about it, I was also just like, yo, I think that's what it should be called. Yeah, code, code of, of conduct. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So many things that we learn in school <clears throat> that we don't realize what they're shaping us for, right? Mm. Kind of core principles, core fundamentals. Uh, do you remember the SWOT analysis? I remember that. I I'm hated that. I'm a big fan of the SWOT analysis. In real life, right? Right. Today, yeah. it's very Strength practical. Weaknesses, opportunities, opportunities, and opportunities. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And threats. And threats. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, threads. I'm a big fan of the SWOT analysis. Yes. And even when I learned it back then, it was like, ah, this one makes it, it makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah. <clears throat> I was saying to an associate of mine recently in a meeting, I was like, I'll probably always have to figure out the mission and the vision in the business plan. But the SWOT analysis yeah. you always always try to get. Yeah, yeah. Um but I mean non nonetheless, let's get into it. Uh, get into the first caller um, and see what's today's question and engagement. All right, all right, all right. On that, <clears throat> please drop us your questions on that link, you know. Um, www.straightlittle.io uh, yes. forward slash yes. dial yes. dash n dash discover. Um, send us your questions, send us your engagement. Hello. Yeah. Hello, hi. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Are we speaking to XXC Legacy? Yes, you are. <laughs> You're live on Dial and Discover, and I'm sitting with my brother Sia, and I'm Calvin. Yeah, what's up, girl? How you doing? How are you guys? I'm we're all right. Chilling. Chilling. Good, chilling. good, 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 good. I know that you have a question for us. You've been engaging in one or two things, and you know you wanted to shoot us a question, so we thought let's bring it to the show. What's the question that you have for us? So um, I want to ask, as an artist, most of us want to engage in brands, and most of us want to work with brands. But then we know that most brands look at numbers instead of engagement. And I'm in the music industry, but I'd like to, for example, get myself involved in the hair industry and be a brand ambassador. How do I, as an artist, get to shoot my shots to a brand, seeing that my numbers are not as high, but my engagements are up? Okay. Digital question. Digital question. Yeah. yeah. 2023, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> Full time. Um... 
That's a dope question. So you're essentially saying that, you know, um, there's a difference between numbers as far as like how many followers you have yeah. versus how much engagement you're getting. Um, and if I understand correctly, you might not have the highest amount of followers, but you have a very, very great engagement and you want to figure yeah. out how to be attractive to brands. Mm. Yeah. Okay, look, so I think off the top, and I know from, from, I think the core fundamentals that we need to understand is what are numbers and what do they mm. represent? You yeah, know what I'm trying to say? Yes. And how are they supposed to be flowing? Yeah. Um, so I might be a little bit off in the, in the accuracy, but I'm going to give it a go. <clears throat> so when you have a thousand followers on Instagram, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. A good engagement rate should be predominantly about 20% of your following, right? Mm -hmm. Which means if you yeah. post a photo, you should be getting at least about 200 likes. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, however, as that number increases based on the algorithm, that percentage decreases. Mm -hmm. So when you have a million followers, your actual good engagement rate should be 1% to 2% of your following. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, so a lot of the time, people kind of focus on, um, I have more followers. So naturally, I have a million followers. Why am I not getting half a million likes? Yeah. You know? But the algorithm doesn't really favor you in that sort of way. It's like the more people that you have looking at you, they can't put you on each and every one of those people's feeds. So that's the first thing. So often from agency, you know, when we run a play with an influencer creator, mm. we go straight to engagement like XLC is alluding to, right? Yeah. It's not about your numbers. It's about how many people are engaging with you. Mm. So if you're seeing at a million followers and you're hitting 24% engagement, that is amazing. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Because that's 23, yeah. 22 more than what it's supposed to be, you mm. know? Um, which means you're probably raking in about 220,000 likes at yeah. a pop, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's the first thing. So I think it's really helping the brand that you're working with understand what numbers they should be paying attention to, you know? Um, so you said you want to work for a hair brand and a hair company. Um, that immediately means that your stats need to speak to that. So here's a second layer. If you have a thousand followers, but 82% of them are men, you've right? Got a problem. You've got a problem mm. for that hair business. Yes. You know what I mean? Because who they're trying to speak to is women. Yes. And in that point in time, you're probably not representing, yes, great engagement, but you're not representing what we're actually looking to sell to, you know? Mm. On the flip end, you also need to realize that of those few women that you do have, some of them might just be leave a natural beauty, you know? Yeah. Um, some of them might be... Um, people who can't afford the hair, you know what I'm trying to say? Mm. So in actual fact, then you go pitch yourself so high, thousand followers, X amount of engagement, they say, cool, let's get to work. You work and you sell one hair piece every six months. Yeah, you've got a problem. You've got a problem. You know what I mean? So I think it's really most of the time what I would advise is the first question I'll ask to any client for social media and digital, we get into the room and we say, how can we help you? Yeah. What is your need? What is your problem? You know what I'm trying to say? Mm. Then we kind of reel it back to say, let's provide this tailor-made solution for you based on what you're trying to achieve. Most people have a very generic pitch. They get into every room and have mm. the same pitch. Mm. I have a thousand followers. You know yes. what I'm trying to say? Yes. I can sell your head, yeah. da, 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 but you don't even understand what our need is. 100%. We, probably you know? we might not need sales. We, we might, might not need, need something sales. else. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. We the, might need... Yeah, go for it. Yeah, no, no. I'm saying in the sense that you know, you probably have high sales already or whatever yeah. else is. And this in this period here, this is actually what we're putting our money to. Exactly. And if you're not speaking to that, you've got a bit of a, a problem. You know, yeah. what's, what's interesting is that I was having this chat with somebody, I think like two, three days ago. Um, and essentially big figure, big figure in the industry. Right. But, you know, you have this battle of numbers and engagement. Mm. And how I explained it to them was, I said, in the beginning of this whole influencer conversation, numbers was the chat, right. your followers. And then we got to engagement, mm -hmm. essentially, right? Yeah. But when we got to the engagement chat, by actual fact, we got to insights. And you need to understand that as much as a brand also understands it. Mm. In fact, you need to understand it a little bit more, more if you're going to step into that room. Mm -hmm. So you need to understand your now insights become the more important thing, which is what you're speaking to. Mm. You're speaking to um, are your followers ma male or female? Right. Are your followers in SA or out the country, mm -hmm. around the province? Are they in Limpopo or are they in Cape Town? You know, because the, the brand you'd speak into might not be servicing in that particular area that you have high engagement in. That's also a factor, Facts. right? Which brings us now down to the fact that when you go into that room, you don't just represent yourself. 
you're engaging with another mm-hmm. entity mm-hmm. and you need to understand where they sit in the conversation. Right. And that comes back to a ROI. Yes. What is a ROI for them, not for, for you? you? Yes. Because if you're selling whatever and you saying, I'll be happy if I get this, that's you. I'll be then the entity can say, but we'll be happy if we get if we this. Get this right. And you might not be able to provide that, or you can if you understand now mm-hmm. that aspect. Right. So for the most part, to where you add, um, you know, in the in the conversation to say, you've got the engagement, but you know, um, the brand type of thing, like to try to get them to understand, mm. is essentially understanding where does the brand sit and what they want. Yeah. So that when you get in there, you can communicate it accurately. Directly. And right. I think also the, the second element to that is also then being proactive in your approach. You know, yeah. um, you don't you don't need to lie to yourself and believe that you're the only person DMing that brand to work with them. You know, <laughs> a lot of people do, do that. that. It's not a real thing. That is so true. It's yeah, not a it's real not thing. It's not a real thing, you know. Yes. It's, like, <laughs> it's like, not that I know anything about this, but I'd assume that people who can hit on girls very well don't come with the same generic approach. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Because they've heard that 10,000 times. Yes, I've heard I'm beautiful. Even the car guard tells me. You know what I'm trying to say? So (laughs) no unique preposition there, right? Um, So it's knowing how to approach it. So you can just, you got to jot the system somehow. They must be like, hmm, never heard that before, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think a great example, and I know we've touched on this before, is show and tell. A lot Mm -hmm. of brands that I sit with and work with, you know what I'm trying to say, with me, um, selecting people to work with, we don't really look at the talkers. We look at the ones who are showing us. Who are doing it. Yes. yes, 100%. And a few of my executive associates in some of these companies, I've got to learn so much from them because this is a room where you're like, yo, we're getting hit by like 40 girls a day, you know? Yes. Some of them are saying just for free. Some of them are saying exposure. Some of them are saying, and it's like, guys, we're making so much money, you know? Mm. We're really not doing this because of your sales. It's more like a brand affiliation, the messaging that we're trying to drive, you yes. know? So when you pay attention to a brand like Rick Ross, for example, yes. you hold the Belay bottle for six months. Yes. You drink it, you snap it, you know, you're enjoying the product, you're marketing it naturally. Mm. By the time you pick up the phone, and speak to those people. They say yes because they've seen the results. 100%. You know, and you're not saying PowerPoint <laughs> presentation, here's mm-hmm. what we can do. You're saying, here's what <clears> I've <throat> done. Here are the numbers. Here are my analytics. Yeah. Here's the jurisdictions I'm touching. How can I help you? Help me help you. You know? That's very good. I think, yeah. I think the main point of that is essentially showing the brand what it looks like. Yeah. Um, you know, it's crazy. Sometimes you want to make an example of, uh, you want to pitch to bmw but you've been driving a a, a vw the whole time oh, and now your whole pitch is a vw pitch yeah and they're like but you keep spending here so so what are we actually talking about mm. that's actually a very powerful one as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what about one where you go into a samsung launch and all the content creators are shooting with iphones, iPhones. <laughs> let's not get into it <laughs> um x we hope that you um did you did you basically get an answer and some, yeah, some yeah, yeah, okay. Do you have any ideas for these hate companies? Why, why you? Yes, I actually want to ask another question. <clears throat> so, if let's say I am, I, I want to approach like a hair company, yes, and be a brand ambassador, that was one question that I asked you. But then now, if let's say I want to give them marketing ideas as to how they can maybe sell their hair, different marketing tactics, examples, and how they will work out. If now I approach a brand and let them know about this idea, how am I not guaranteed or how am I guaranteed that they're not going to now take this idea and use it for themselves? Because it's one thing being a brand ambassador for a hair company, but it's also one thing being involved in the marketing strategy that they have. Yeah. So how do I then approach that or avoid you know, them using the ideas and then not even engaging with me at all? So do you so want to take the I truth? Say, I want to say this. Um, the truth for the approach. Yeah, the... the, the, the the tricky thing about this conversation, right, is that she, she's got the ideas, mm. right, which is, which is cool. Mm. Um, a lot of people have ideas, right? Don't forget that, one. Number two, when you talk about something like marketing, that's very specific. Mm-hmm. And to what you were saying, that it would be of reflection of your brand mm. to say that what you're about to say as ideas works, so the value of your ideas will be a reflection from your brand. From your brand, yes. You get yes, what I'm saying? That makes sense. So, so you could be in a position where you're moving, you're building your brand, etc. 
and now you want to help this other brand. Remember what we said. They probably not. They don't, probably don't have issues with sales. Mm. It's different if you're taking a brand that's dying or that's died. That's a different conversation. Yes. But if you're taking a brand that's already moving and you're saying, oh, snap, yeah, they're moving, but hey, it would be cool if they did this and this and this. They go, okay, that's cool. But are you applying that same direction to what you're doing? Because mm. your brand is a reflection of that. Yes. Yes. So Which is where mm. selling ice and Eskimo comes from. Because, Say more. Yeah, yeah. Say more? Because, because um, <clears throat> let me take a step back before I land on that one. Yeah. Imagine, um, well, let's be honest, right? A lot of these advertising agencies use the girl who has perfect skin for Pons adverts. Yes. It's not really the Pons, right? No. So, in just a, I shouldn't have, never mind. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's in just a position yeah. that same element, imagine as a brew who's very, very, very crusty boys. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. No hair washed, like very, okay. very dirty with the same product. Use this now. Pond to clear and like my brother, you got pimples for days. You yes, know what I mean? Got you. So to what you're saying, you can't sell something that you're not reflecting yourself because yeah. nobody's really going to buy into that. Yeah. So the whole selling ice on Eskimo, marketers generally say that I'm so good at marketing that I'm going to sell ice on Eskimo. A person yes. who lives who in lives ice. lives in ice. So I'm going to sell ice. Right. It's pretty much the resume chat. Yeah. Like, you're going to hit a wall if you don't have a resume. Mm, like, mm. to say, yes, I'm a creative director, and this is what I've done. I've done creative direction for this. And yes, the biggest issue is, but how do you get the first job if you don't have the others? It's, right. the, it's the biggest cycle issue, even in employment. Every, yes. You know, you go apply for a job, but you must have employment history. But you're <laughs> applying for the job. <laughs> well, the credit <laughs> one. Ah, the credit one is so annoying. But yeah. that doesn't... It doesn't change that factor. Mm -hmm. For you to step, it, for me to step to Nike and say I want to be one of the creative directors, they're gonna say, okay, where have you been a creative director successfully? Mm. That's gonna be the question. Yeah. And I need to show, mm. I need to show proof of concept. Yeah. I need to say I've done it here, I've done it here, I've done it there, and then they go, okay, cool. We see. It. Then you're saying, but I've done that there to this level. With you guys, I can take it here. Right. And then mm -hmm. it's like, okay, cool. That makes more sense. So. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you're pitching to concepts or to pockets like that, that's the response you got, you're kind of going to get, mm. right? It is also different if you're pitching a, a, an innovative product, mm. right? That's a different conversation because the product lives independently. Yeah. Right. Or that idea to say, I'm going to be hypothetical and say, um, the idea of maybe taking this hair product and putting it in a box like this and shipping it to this, da, 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 da. That idea can live independently because mm -hmm. it's not a marketing strategy or plan. It's almost it's an IP. idea. It's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on its own. Yeah. Now that's a different conversation, mm. right? And I mean, around that, you still need to be a little bit careful for sure. Yeah. Right. She she asked something earlier on. She said, um, "How can I guarantee that they're not going to?" There's no guarantees. Oh well, yeah, yeah. You asked how. Oh yeah. How can you guarantee, guarantee like that? that they're not going to steal the idea? Is yeah. that what you were saying as well? Yes, I asked, how do I guarantee that the brand won't now take my idea and then maybe remix it or add some salt and then pitch it as their own? Yeah, you can't guarantee that. There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee, but you can you can you can do as much as you can to prevent and put precautions in place. Yeah. But the guarantee, they oh my man, people people screw over with your contracts in your hand. Literally. You know what I'm trying so, to say? So I mean, that's the tricky thing. You because um, what one thing I always say is that when you deal with corporates, you must also understand that you're dealing with people. Mm. You're not just dealing with this entity that's a thing. You're dealing with humans. <laughs> and so when you get into a room, depending on the type of humans you're dealing with, will kind of give you an indication whether the good faith will actually be st will stand or not. Because for the most part, even if you sign an NDA, right? What's an NDA? A non-disclosure agreement. Okay. Which says that between you and I, whatever we've discussed, we cannot tell anybody else outside of this room. Nor can we use. Nor it. can we use the information that you've that you've given. Uh, nor can you flip it in a way from blue to green. Mm. But NDAs are really a good good faith conversation. Facts. We're saying that in good faith we wanna work with each other. So hey, we'll keep to that. Mm -hmm. But if somebody really wants to take your idea. They'll take, They'll take it. They'll take it. And it's people who are patient. <clears throat> They'll yes. wait five years. 
and then take it. Yes. You know? When 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 everybody when you stop pitching the idea and you also leave it to die exactly. and then they take it and, and then use they it. take it, yeah. 100%. And for some reason they just hope that you don't have the internet to come across it or whatever. Because that's another yeah. thing, right? Like it's it, it must be so much easier to steal back in the day. Because mm. I just take it again, I circulate it and you'll never know. Ah sorry CC, not today, thank you. Hey guys, let's execute what she said, you yes. know? But yes. now it's like I've seen so many creators and people in, in, in XC's position yes. where it's like, but that's my idea, you know? And then they had this whole chip on their shoulder. Guys, I promise you, I said this. this. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's almost like nobody cares. But we've cares. seen that happen so many times on the uh, internet. But it gets it gets nowhere. Yeah. Unless you're in a binding agreement that uh, even the... Because the NDA is one thing. But if you got into whatever the the business, business yes. of it all, that gives you a little bit more ground to stand on. But even in that, people... I mean, your corporates have, have enough um, resources to pay lawyers mm. to go around those things they'll bully you yeah and bully you out Eish, of that so so my whole thing when it comes to that i speak to with any person i say read the room that you're in look for the good faith hmm. if the good faith isn't there that's already your red flag but also where ideas are concerned if you're going to pitch an idea to anybody that is not in your camp essentially or in your business or company you must be willing to lose that idea hmm. I always say that. You must be willing to lose the idea. Facts. Because as soon as I sit in a room with people I don't know and I give them that idea, anybody can take it and run. So true. It's free game it's at free that game. stage. And then another thing is also <laughs> the um, external factor. So you're sitting in a room where XXC is pitching mm. for a hair business mm. and then you hear her idea and the end is between her and your company, but you take it to a cousin outside to say, Poison, run with this one. Petrol station, let's do this let's thing. Let's do this thing. You know, and it's so far removed from you. Yeah. Then you have those like, ah, you know, I thought of something similar. Like, mm. Miguel, it's yours. But yeah. you just don't know how far it's actually traveled. So that's my advice on, on that. It is, it is a, it's always a risk factor when you're going to pitch an idea. Hmm. Always, always. So essentially, be willing to lose the idea. Yeah. Put parameters in place like an NDA to ensure that you protect yourself and intellectual property. Yeah. And pray. <laughs> <laughs> the last one's very important. The last one's very critical. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, XXC, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we really hope that that helped, actually, um, with you thank navigating you the hair so brand. Much. And just in general, I think as a creative, with you navigating with any other brands that you look to engage with, um, you definitely, you you have to build your brand most as well. You have to build that to ensure that you can back up the stuff that you want to put forward. That's one. But the second thing as well, you have to be conscious of the rooms that you get into. Not everybody wants your best interest. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying you want to do this and you have this great idea, some people will hear you out just to take it. Mm. And if that's the case, that's why I say you must be willing to lose the idea. All right. Thank you guys so much. Okay. Thank you for uh, taking our call. Shout out to Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Now we'll keep in touch. Thank you very much for taking our call and engaging with us. We appreciate you. All right. Bye-bye. All right. One time. Deuces. Deuces. Uh, deuces. IP, IP chats are so hectic. I can't have this chat, man. I'm too hurt. I know. We've had so many experiences, uh, right? It's the and worst. the one of the biggest things, I mean, I'll tell you the story. A couple of years ago, um, I engaged with a intellectual property lawyer, mm. right? Which was very interesting. And, and he's at the level where he did all the IP agreements uh, or IP contracts for the stadiums hmm. and the how chain. Hmm. Right? So he's like big, big time lawyer. And I got the chance to ask this guy. So, okay, you're dealing with IPs. How is it that if I come up with whatever idea, I put it on paper and everything, I've got the evidence, da 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 that not only somebody in SA, let alone somebody in SA take my idea, somebody in America, somebody in China India, can just rock me Pakistan, and take the idea. Yeah. And he says, the biggest thing that literally would solve all of this is the fact that we don't have a court that governs the world. Hmm. Hence why your big brands have to have trademarks, several trademarks in, in different, different parts of the world. Hmm. Because the one that you have in South Africa doesn't work. For Saudi. In China, doesn't work. In, in Asia, doesn't work. In Italy, doesn't work. It doesn't. It's Hating. only here. And even so, when you're able to do, they, they, you have certain limits to what you can trademark, what you can put in as IP. Hmm. 
your ma- your machineries have have a lot more space and leeway. Right. It's an innovation. It's a tech thing. Whatever. Us with creative ideas, ideas things that we think it, it's fluff pieces in it a is. in a formal formality. Yes. Because it's theory. It is theory. You can't trademark theory. Mm. That's literally you can trademark a physical cup that you've designed that can do this and the third. You can't trademark a theory of a concept of if we do this, people will react like this. That's a psychological thing. Hmm. Can't even trade. And that's interesting because I've always felt or mm-hmm. heard that maybe you can, but I guess from the lawyer, it's, it's not a real thing. It's probably one of those hypotheticals. Like it just has loopholes. It, there's the too theory. many loop. There's and loopholes. They fight to find the loopholes. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Like the corporate has resources to find, find the loopholes oh, and man. just literally rock those loopholes. And I know that when they create those contracts, they're probably creating them with the loopholes in mind. Somewhere there. This is, exactly. Hey, sh- you know? So, so I think that's the biggest thing Like with, for creatives. I'm like, you got to get into your room and I think one of the things maybe that we've learned where pitching is concerned, like if you go in, it's not to pitch the whole concept. Please don't. Because you have to have the deal in order to give them the ideas. They mm-hmm. must be paying you for that. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, you can speak about the overview direction of where you would take things. Mm. Yes. Mm. But the really the breakdown of it, they've got to at least be in agreement there where you know that you're getting whatever retain or you're yeah. getting whatever figure for yeah. this thing that you're doing. I used to go like um, with the client um, I would write such a very long, extensive pitch. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When I do this from here, when I do like that, when I stand at a robot, when I cross the robot, this car's gonna drive past. When I put petrol over there, water, water, and I say thank you very much, sir. But I'm not really interested. Okay, load up the vehicles. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. you've given them everything, mm-hmm. right? Then I went. Now I'm on the other side of the scale, um, where it's like we are going to drive. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go across certain elements. You yeah. know what I mean? We will refill. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to get to our destination. Yeah. But now they're saying, please give us a bespoke plan, right? Because they use like, yeah. give us something that's tailor apply, it to tailor us. Tailor it to us, you know, which is difficult to do without actually giving you the actual idea in itself, right? Mm. So I, I, I'm trying to give you a destination, but I'm not trying to tell you how we're going to mm. get there up until you show me some level of commitment, commitment. from your end, yeah, you know? For sure. And then if I must, I might just tell you, we're going to cross a road one. Yeah. For more? Some the dotted line, and you know we're gonna kind of move through. So, it's tricky, bro. It's it's, it's tug of war. There's so many levels to the mm. sort of stuff. Like you think you're ticking one box just to like get another one get open. Another one open. As, yeah. yeah, that's growth. That's growth. It is more money, more problems. I think if we can get, if we can get somebody even in that space to speak more about that, yeah, maybe that we could all learn something new about mm. um, being able to trademark, being able to ho- like have some sort of. Ownership of ownership. your intellig- intellectual yeah. property. Mm. Because even now, there's like social media and content creation. Mm. Like, what's Usage the chat rights. around that? Usage rights, you know? Yeah. There's a whole chat around that. And I don't think our influence, particularly our content creators, excuse me, mm. know the chats around that. Yeah. Like the guys overseas or the guys in America mm. that are able to sell their intellectual property to a brand for bigger money than just that post money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which is so, so difficult. Which, which is, is so difficult. So difficult and, and there's a whole other oh. chat. And I so, think it's tough. Sorry mm, to cut you. It's yeah, also yeah. tough being in our position because because we've made ourselves the bridge between the brands, corporates, and the actual people. Um, it's almost like we water and oil. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because what the brand wants to not communicate, usage rights, yes. da, 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 is what you can't necessarily tell your influencer according to them. Yes. So for example, take a photo. As an influencer, when you take a photo, brands can just take that image and put it over their social media, print a billboard and so on and so forth. You're yes. supposed to be getting paid for that. Yes. But 100%. the brand won't tell you that mm-hmm. because they don't want to pay that check. Mm-hmm. But now because you're also representing consultant for influencer, you have to go to the room and say, yo, you know, there's usage rights. Yes. You know? So then the brand's like, yo, shut up. Yeah, you know? don't say that. <laughs> exactly. Don't talk about that. You know that. what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it's very, very interesting. I mean, from the content creator side, like, yo, um, 5,000 rand is cool. That's a cool budget, but it cost me 3K to shoot this. Yeah. Man. 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 And then the brand is saying, no, just 5,000. Sorry. Make it work. If you can't make it work, we're going to go find somebody else. somebody else. And that somebody else is also a problem because when they take it, then it means someone will take it. And that's how. that's how the market gets regulated in that space. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's a whole other subject. I'm, it's we're gonna a whole different chat. We're going to come back chat. to that. Yeah, um, yeah. Guys, thank you very much for watching. This was today's episode. We hope that you learned something and you got something that you guys can use as well. 
please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe mm -hmm. and let us know uh what you've learned from this let us know if there's any questions follow up questions from this as well engage with us on our social media please and yeah that's it from us today cool brother um hopefully we can do this again next week i know there's a lot yeah. of traveling happening in the next couple of days yeah yeah but we'll we'll, we'll find a way to do it we'll operate yeah it. we gotta keep it keep it going. Uh, as long as we don't go the COVID direction hello hey. kevin uh, can you hear me is the mic on <laughs> hello <laughs> I saw this funny meme. Sorry to put this at the end. Um, have you seen that meme of like, it's like a serious, serious lawyer and he's sitting in a room with like global leaders and whatever um, and he has the cat filter on. So this whole time he's speaking, he's speaking as a cat. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And they're trying to tell him, they're like, um, sorry, uh, I don't know if you realize what's going on. You know, And he's like, uh, I can see this whole cat filter, you know. Uh, I've got my assistant trying to help me get rid of it. Uh, but I promise you, I'm not a cat. <laughs> It's like, it's just the different gaps about the world, bro. Like it's, technology it's, versus, it's, it's yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy, the thing. It's wild. But, but, I think, nonetheless. but I think right now we're still safe. We're outside. Yeah. So let's keep, let's, let's keep doing what we can outside. Please. All right. Thank you very much for watching. That's today's episode. One time. Thank you.